Afro Tales Podcast is a part of the Connected Podcast Network. Ahoy, my friends. Welcome aboard the Afro Tales Podcast. I'm your storyteller, Amon Mazinga. Join me as we explore the tales that grew from the people of indigenous and African descent in the Americas and the Caribbean. After, come and see me, chef, who will impart upon you a recipe for the story you have just heard. So with no further ado, let us set sail on this new age of exploration. A Voyage to Eternity It seems there were two men who'd been friends from school days. They went into different professions. Each made his own life, and they went their separate ways. But they kept in touch. Time passed, and one day, after four, maybe five years, they got together again. And one of them said, Hey, you know, brother, life is short. We aren't old, but... We're not getting any younger either. You're right, brother. But we care about each other and we'll always have our friendship. That lasts. Or does it? You know, we ought to make a pact. Whoever goes to the grave first will communicate with the other one. Send a letter to say whether eternity exists. If the survivor doesn't hear anything, he'll know that life ends with the last breath and there's no other world. Yes, let's. So they agreed. After that, they kept in touch. Three, four years went by. Then one day, a messenger arrives at the house of one of the two friends. He's on a blooded steed, all rigged up leading a second horse without a rider. He knocks, a servant opens the door. Is the gentleman in? The gentleman is in. May I enter? Why not? The messenger is well dressed, well built, what people would call a good looking lad. Then the master of the house appears and says, What can I do for you? I have a letter from a gentleman. And you are? That isn't important. I'm under orders to take you back with me if you wish to go. Read the letter. It'll tell you. Well, read it. My friend, I send you this at long last. Looking forward to seeing you. I don't ask you reply, but you come in person if you only for a short while. The bearer of this letter will guide you. Trust him. There's no reason to be afraid. I want you to know that I'm longing to see you. You must not forget, we promised to be friends in this life and in the next. I should have written you sooner, but I do it now with the tender regard we have always had for each other. I'm confident you will not refuse this invitation. For if you do, our friendship will be at an end. The friend thought for a minute. Finally, he said to the messenger, I'll take, I'll have to make arrangements. How much time can you give me? Two or maybe three days? Two or three days, that will be enough. Will you wait? You must stay here with me. I'm sorry, I can't. I have other lodgings not far away. Then come for meals. Sorry, I'm committed elsewhere. The friend thought, how odd. He said, at least you can leave your horses. Not even that, I must keep them with me. The messenger rode off, leading the rideless horse. Then in three days, the friend put all his affairs in order. He gave instructions to his servants. He went to the bank and different government offices. I'm not sure 
but I think it was in Spain. And he settled his accounts, paid off the taxes on his house. That would have been it because he didn't have a country estate. He was a rich gentleman though and got everything taken care of without delay. Greased a few palms here and there to speed things up. Money talks, you know. Then after the three days had gone by, the messenger reappeared. Ready? Can we leave now? Ready, he said. Let's, let's leave. He told his servants, take care of the house for me as if it were yours. He paid them their wages in advance and bid them goodbye. They rolled out of the city, which of course had new buildings under construction everywhere, the way it is with cities. So they didn't reach open country right away. But when they did, the man realized his horse wasn't touching the ground anymore. And the next thing he knew, they were flying through the air. They kept on this way for three or four, maybe even seven or eight hours. Well, it seems they got to a great hall where there was beautiful singing and the man asked, where's my friend? Different people welcomed him. Come in, come in. Oh. They led them to an apartment. There his friend put his arms around him and said, I'm so glad to see you. I was afraid you'd refuse my invitation. Brother, how could you think such a thing? Your letter gave me no choice. I put all my investments on hold, paid my taxes, and arranged my affairs so I could come see you. What else could I do? After all, we've been friends since we were children, and now we are at the middle point of our lives, or a little beyond. And his friend joked, I'm going to tell you something. That might surprise you, though I hope it won't offend you. Tell me, friend, I, I can take it. And they say what he told him was this. As you must remember, brother, I left you, I left the world a few years ago, four to be exact. My promise was to let you know whether eternity exists. I've done that. And if you look around, you can judge for yourself. But for the first three years, I went through torment because of my sins on earth. In my own opinion, I was a righteous man. But once in the grave, I came to realize that my good works had been few. Not enough to bring me directly here. Now, at least, I'm on the road to heaven. And you can imagine the beauty that lies ahead. My penance is over. I'm free now and on my way. I don't know when I'll arrive. Will you join me? Shall we travel together? Or would you rather go back to earth and wait for the creator to call you? Answer me so I can tell my messenger what to do. Now, according to the story, his friend hesitated. He wasn't sure what to answer. Finally, he said, I've got to go back home and get rid of all my worldly goods. When everything has been given away and the everlasting can see that I have nothing left, when I am naked, He'll gather me up, and you and I will meet again. I know what you mean, said the other friend. Be sure to hold nothing back. Give away everything you have, because you never know when the Lord of the universe will call you. They talked for a little while longer. When the messenger took the friend back to earth, when he arrived in his city he didn't recognize him 
The building that had been under construction were now in ruins. There had been wars and other disasters. The messenger left him at the door of his house and disappeared. But the house, the house had been confiscated years before and sold for taxes. There were new owners. He showed them his deed of title, but they bounced him out on his ear. He had to seek shelter in a, well, in a monastery. I think it was Franciscan Monastery. And that's where he died. That's the story. There's no more. It's the end. Wow, so that's an interesting story. Coming from, as like I said before, Latin American folk tales from John Beerhurst. A story about two friends going their separate ways, meeting back up years later, and making a pact with each other about what the afterlife may be, if there is an afterlife. Whether or not it even exists, and if it does, communicating with the one that's still here and letting them know what's going on. Being somebody who's who has a, a friend like that, I must say, if when I leave here or when he, if he leaves here, he can send back a message to let me know what's going on on the other side. I would be ecstatic. I'm pretty sure any of us would be ecstatic to know that there's something beyond what's going on right now in our lives. I love that aspect of the story. I love that friendship that they have. That they would, that even after death, they can still have that. And imagine getting that message. You Somebody comes and says, hey, I need to take you somewhere. You don't know where you're going. But you get a letter from your friend that you have such a deep friendship that you don't mind going wherever it is that you're supposed to be going. Are you really going to the afterlife or are you going somewhere else? You don't know. Blind faith and you go. I love how the friend tells him, I thought I was a good man. I thought... I was a righteous person. I thought I was doing the things the right way. And I found out that once I got here, I was wrong, very wrong. And I've had to work. Now, not every religion or every faith walk believes in a purgatory like this one. Some believe you go straight. Either way, some believe just going to avoid whichever is your belief that's up to you you know whatever makes you sleep comfortably at night that's up to you we're just talking about the story to warn your friend to say hey i'm going through this you have a chance to fix yourself do it you don't want to end up where i am That's almost like a parent talking to a child, right? I've been there. I've done that. You see what I'm going through. You don't have to go through this. Get your life right. Do what you need to do to be better than what I am. So you can get to glory faster than what I was taking me. You know, no matter what your faith is, no matter what your belief system is you want your friends or your children or anybody else that you love to do better than you You, well at least you should (laughs) I want my children to do better than me that I know for sure so 
babies, if you're listening to this, work harder, be successful, do better than your father. I love you as always. And to everyone else out there, I say the same. Work hard. Fight for your dreams. But do it in a way that's right. Do it in a way that you'd be proud of. That your family, that your loved ones, you'd be proud of. The ones you love and that love you. Alright? Let me get off my soapbox. And you can go see Chef. Get this wonderful Bolivian dish. And until we have another voyage, we are coming up on the tail end of season five. So be here for the last two episodes. And until then, as always, have a blessed day. Welcome, my friends, to the galley. I am your chef, chef, and today we have a wonderful recipe inspired by the story you have just heard. Today, we will be creating picante de pollo. Now, what will you need for this recipe? Five medium-sized chicken breasts. If the chicken breasts are bigger than one portion, cut them in half. 4 ounces Aje Amarillo paste or Aje Panza paste. The Amarillo is a lot spicier than the Panza, so adjust accordingly. 2 garlic cloves, minced. Half a teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of black pepper. Half a teaspoon of cumin. Cumin can be strong for a lot of people, so go slow on the cumin. You can always add more later, but you can never take away. Two medium sized potatoes, four tablespoons olive oil, two tablespoons of olive oil will be used for the sauce and two will be used for the fresh salsa with the tomatoes. Two Roma tomatoes, half a medium sized onion, five cups of green peas, and two tablespoons of freshly chopped pasta, optional for decoration and aroma. Now, how do we put this together? Easy. First, start by boiling the chicken. Cover chicken breast with water and boil for about 10 minutes. In a separate pot, Boil the potatoes, skin on, no need to peel. Steam the green peas. I use frozen green peas for about three to four minutes. Drain and set aside. Get a skillet now. Put it on the stove top and turn to medium heat. Add half a cup of water and four ounces of the aji paste or aji panta, whichever you have chosen. As sauce boils, lower the heat a little bit so you don't burn the sauce. Add the minced garlic, olive oil, keep stirring slowly. Now, you can add the cumin, little at a time, and black pepper. Stir slowly and taste to see if the sauce needs any adjusting. At this point, the potatoes should be done. Turn the heat off, rinse the potatoes until it's cool to the touch. Peel it carefully since it might still be hot. So rinse as needed. Use half the potato, smash it and add to the sauce. Keep stirring as you smash. This will thicken the spice sauce taste the sauce if you made it too spicy and would like to lower the heat a bit add half a teaspoon of sugar to make it less spicy this is a trick for you if the sauce is too thick or you would like to have 
more sauce add half a cup of chicken stock stir again another tip if you want the sauce to be creamier smoother you can blend it and return it to the skillet finally you can add the chicken to the sauce if you want the chicken to absorb more of the sauce taste add it after boiling it to the skillet and cover really well with a spicy sauce if you like your chicken to have a little bit of a crust you can fry it for a minute on each side in a separate skillet before transferring it to the spicy sauce turn the heat on low now and let the chicken absorb the flavor of the sauce leave simmering for at least 15 minutes chop the tomatoes and onion in julienne strips and put them in a separate bowl sprinkle with salt and add two tablespoons of olive oil mix well serve the chicken and spicy sauce over your favorite side dish cut the leftover boiled potato in circles and add to the plate add green peas over the chicken and a little bit of tomato or fresh onion fresh salsa over the dish sprinkle with parsley and dig in and that is it my friend now go do what you do make this recipe yours and until i have another wonderful recipe for you remember the friends in this story be like the friends and until next time my friends as always enjoy thank you for joining us on this voyage thanks to art by chalet for the logo episode and t-shirt designs you may also get a t-shirt and other items on tpublic.com you can contact me on all socials at afro tales cast that's afro t-a-l-e-s cast and email me at afro tales podcast at yahoo.com you may also become a benefactor by simply sharing with any and everyone giving a thumbs up or rating in your podcast app of choice if you wish to donate i am on patreon and coffee.com that's ko-fi.com so until we meet again may your winds be fair and your seas follow <laughs>